fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and the hearty Ohio Silver, the Lone Ranger. Faithful Indian companion Toto, the daring and resourceful mask rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. A troop of United States cavalry had pitched temporary camp in the hills, a few miles from the small western town of Rock Ridge. In his headquarters tent, the commanding officer, Captain Milton, and Lieutenant Wiley were in conference. Lieutenant, up to now, you and the rest of the troop haven't known why we're on our way to Fort Terrace. That's right, sir. The reason is this. Colonel Harris, who commands the fort, has only a small detachment there. He sent a dispatch asking for reinforcements because he fears an Indian uprising. Does the colonel have reason for such fears, Captain? He has very strong reason. I see. A tribe of Apaches under Chief White Fox have been showing signs of getting out of hand. Scouts report that they've been holding councils of war. And it's been reported that someone is supplying them with ammunition and rifles. And the colonel expects an attack on the fort? That's right. Well, sir, why don't we push on? We've been here since yesterday. I'll tell you why. In his dispatch, the colonel suggested we camp here near Rock Ridge until I locate a certain man who can guide us safely to the fort. Otherwise, we'd run the risk of ambush. How do you propose to locate the man you speak of, sir? The colonel explained how that was to be done. About ten miles south of here, there's a mission... I'm to send a message to the Padre there. And he, in turn, will get in touch with the man I mentioned and send him here. But, Captain, I... I... have a note for the Padre right here. Have one of the men take it to the mission immediately. Yes, sir. Oh, uh, one thing more. Notify the guards that the man whom I'll be expecting will be wearing a white hat and a black mask. He'll be riding a white stallion. He carries a letter of identification from the colonel. And possibly he'll bring back my note. He's to be brought in to me at once. But a mass man. Who is he, Captain? He's known as the Lone Ranger. Send the messenger with that note to the Padre right away, Lieutenant. There's no time to lose. Yes, sir. I'll attend to it at once. A short time later, one of the troopers carrying the note to the Padre left the camp and took the trail toward the mission. He had ridden several miles and was rounding a bend in the trail when... Oh, hold it. Oh, hold it. 
With a good shot, Rusty, he's done for. Yeah, he's done for, all right. Better hurry up and search him before somebody comes. Oh, give me a chance, will you? Hey, here's something. Must be an important message. Got sealing wax on it. Better wait and let Buck open it. Come on, we'll take it to the hideout. Now, well, let's get that trooper's horse first. Hey, you know, Buck was smart to have us keep tabs on them troopers. Sure. Buck Carey can outsmart any army officer they send out here. Easy there. Get up there. Get up. Get up. Get up. Buck Carey was a tall, muscular man. And though living the life of an outlaw had made him hard and cold within, his firm, regular features often assumed a disarmingly pleasant expression. He was lounging on a cot in a corner of the shack when Morton Rusty entered. Hey, Buck, we got something important. Eh? What is it? Sealed message we took from a trooper. He isn't alive to know we got it, though. Mm, I thought they'd try to send somebody through with a dispatch. He wasn't riding toward the fort, Buck. He was riding south. Riding south? That's funny. Give me that dispatch. Yeah. Here it is. Hmm. Is it important? Uh, read it out loud. Now listen to this. Dear Padre, I've been advised you know the whereabouts of the masked man known as the Lone Range. Masked man? Shut up, Rusty. Go on, Buck. It is of the utmost importance that you get word to him at once. Please inform the Lone Ranger that we are camped a few miles south of Rock Ridge and that I anxiously await his arrival. Very truly yours, D.C. Milton, Captain Troop, D.U.S. Cavalry. Hey, that's not good, Buck. I heard about that masked man. He's one critter it's best not to tangle with. Don't be a fool. As long as you got this note, he won't get the message and he won't show up. Yeah, but somebody might find that trooper's body. Then he'll send another message. You crazy fools. Both of you go back and make sure nobody does find that trooper. Oh, sure, sure. We'll attend to it, Buck. Yeah, I guess that note was important, huh? Important enough to give me a good idea. I saw that Lone Ranger once. He rides a big white stallion, wears a black mask and a white hat. Yeah, what about it? Just this. Among the horses they stole from the ranches in the valley, White Fox's Indians brought in a big Arabian horse. A white one. I know White Fox will let me use it. I can make a black mask, and I know where I can get a white hat. Yeah, but why do you hey, want Hey, I bet I get your idea. <laughs> well, if you don't, I'll tell you. Tomorrow afternoon, I'm going to go to the trooper's camp and pass myself off as the Lone Ranger. The following afternoon, Lieutenant Wiley entered the headquarters tent in a state of subdued excitement. Captain, the masked man is here. Fine, fine. Have him come right in. Yes, sir. The captain will see you now, sir. Oh, thanks, Lieutenant. How do you do, sir? I'm Captain Milton. I appreciate your quick response to my message. Well, I came as soon as I heard from the Padre, Captain. Sit down, sit down, sir. Oh, thank you. Captain, the trooper who took the message to the Padre hasn't returned to camp. I thought perhaps he'd return with the masked man. Oh, uh, uh, I can tell you about the trooper, Captain. He, uh, well, he had a slight accident. Uh, sprained his ankle, as a matter of fact. Oh, sprained his ankle? Yes, it was badly swollen. And though he wanted to return, the Padre and I suggested that he stay a day or so. I'm sorry. Oh, I no, it's that... all right, sir. It's all right. <laughs> the trooper earned a short rest by getting you here. What is it you want, Captain? Get us through safely to Fort Terrett. Can you do it? Just put yourself in my hands, Captain. The fort is only about uh, 20 miles west of here. I know, but that low range of hills a few miles over yonder is my main worry. I've been warned to watch out for an ambush by the Indians there. There's a narrow valley through those hills that will best serve our purpose, Captain. Be ready to move at dawn. I'll come back here to guide you to that valley. I should think that taking a valley trail would be dangerous, Captain. A narrow valley would be ideal for an ambush. Uh, I know every move the Indians make, Lieutenant. But if you don't care to trust me... Oh, of course we trust you. In fact, I was told I could trust you completely. The troop will be ready to follow you at dawn. Good, good. I'll ride toward the hills now and scout around a bit. Oh, and don't worry, Lieutenant. I'll make sure everything will work out just as I planned. It was dusk when two horsemen arrived at the outskirts of Rock Ridge. They were the Lone Ranger and his Indian companion. While Tonto rode into town for a few supplies, the masked man waited in a grove of cottonwoods. 
Before long, he heard the steady beat of hoofs that told of Toto's return. Oh, scout. Oh, fella. Easy, scout. Easy, fella. Did you get the supplies, Toto? Ah. <coughs> and me see some troopers in town, Kimasabi. Troopers here in Rock Ridge? Well, me find out troopers have camp in Hill, a few miles to the south. They must be on the way to Fort Terrett. I've heard that Indians are causing trouble out that way. That's right. Well, we might be able to help the commander of the troops. They run the danger of ambush between here and the fort. Maybe it's not safe to go to Trooper's camp. I know Colonel Harris, commanding officer of the fort. He told me that if he had to send for reinforcements, he wanted us to guide them through the hills. The colonel said he'd mention us in his dispatches so that we could safely approach the army camp. Oh, uh, when you go to see troop commander. We're right at the camp at dawn, Toto. Here, Silver. Right now, we'll go pitch camp nearby, then turn in early for a good rest. Easy, sir. Let's go, easy, fella. Hold it. Let's go. Darkness had fallen when Rusty and Ward hurriedly rode to Buck Carey's hideout. Oh, 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 oh. Easy now. Fox move his braves into the valley for the ambush? We rode up to this end of the valley to find out, Buck, but something happened. What? We come on a couple of other critters watching the Redskins move in there. What's that? That's right, Buck. There were a couple of scouts from the fort. We jumped them and made sure one of them won't talk. We shot the other in the arm, but he got away. You clumsy fools. Why didn't you go after him? We did, but his horse was too fast. He rode toward the army camp. He'll warn the captain about the Indians waiting in the valley. He'll know I was trying to trick him. Uh, I won't dare go back in the morning. Well, there's only one other way for the troops to take, Buck. They won't take a chance on the valley now. What are you driving at? It isn't too late yet to have White Fox move his Indians from the valley. So as to ambush the troops on the other trail. A short time later, Lieutenant Wiley entered the captain's tent. Captain Milton. What is it, Lieutenant? A wounded scout from the fort has just arrived, sir. He's right outside. He wants to see you immediately. Well, have him come in. Yes, sir. The captain will see you. Come right in. Yes, sir. Well, speak up, man. What is it? Scout Hawkins from Fort Ted reporting, sir. Go on. Two of us came through the narrow valley in the hills yonder, sir, at dusk. We saw Indians filling into the valley on each side. Are you sure? Yes, sir. While we were watching, we were attacked. Jackson was killed. I was hit in my arm, but I managed to get through to your camp. They're getting ready for an ambush, sir. I'm sure of it. Captain, the man who was here this afternoon as short as the... I know, Lieutenant, I know. Hawkins, did you get a look at your attackers? No, sir. I didn't have a chance, and it was too dark to see much. I'll show you the other trail through the hill, sir. It'll be suicide to go through that valley. Yes, I agree with you. I'm afraid your colonel put his trust in the wrong man. I don't understand, sir. I don't mean you, of course. You're to be commended. Lieutenant informed the guard that when our so-called friend, the Lone Ranger, returns at dawn, he's to be placed under arrest immediately. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger adventure. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments. Continue. As the first flush of dawn spread over the hills, 
The Lone Ranger and Toto were in the saddle, riding toward the army camp to offer their help. As they drew near, the masked man signaled a halt. Oh, oh, oh. Toto, I'll ride on from here alone. Uh-huh. I'm sure I'll get in to see the commander without any trouble. After we talk, I'll come back here for you. I don't expect to be long. Now, we, me wait here until you come, Jim Valley. Good. Then we'll do some scouting in the hills and report conditions to the troop commander. Adios. Adios. Come on, Silver. Not knowing that because of Buck Carey's deception, the camp had been alerted for his arrest, the Lone Ranger rode openly along the trail leading to the camp. He drew rein at the guard's sharp order. Oh, oh. Step out. The advance to be recognized. Very well. Easy, steady, big fella. Stop there and put him up, mister. I'm a friend of Colonel Harris. I've come to see your commanding officer. I'll explain my mask to him. The captain gave special orders about you. You're under arrest. Is that so? Good work, Sentry. I saw him approaching. Keep him covered while I take his guns. Well, just a minute, Lieutenant. You'll take me to you see... You did all uh... the talking you're going to, mister. You said enough yesterday. We found out you were planning to lead us into an ambush. Yesterday? I don't understand. Maybe you don't, but we do. The captain has ordered your arrest for treason. Now, I'll take those guns. Sorry, hey, Lieutenant. Look out, Lieutenant. Let me go. You've you. got a gun at your back. Tell your guard to drop his rifle. You won't get away with this. A few minutes, the whole All right, guard. Be... I give you ten seconds. Throw that rifle in the bushes. Otherwise, oh, I'll be... Uh, I better do it. He'll kill you, Lieutenant. Now I'll toss your gun away, Lieutenant. You'll hang for this. Not if I can help it. Lie down, both of you. Good. Here, Silver. We meet again, Lieutenant. Adios. Easy, steady, big fella. One, two, three. Crumble of the guard! Crumble of the guard! Toto had heard the commotion in the camp. And he was already mounted and waiting to join the Lone Ranger in this fast flight. The two headed into the hills west of the camp and rode hard until they were sure they were safe. They had reached the hillside at the entrance to the narrow valley when they reined to a halt. Hold oh, 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 oh. Easy, easy, easy fellow. Well, what happened, Kimasabi? They tried to place me under arrest, Hato, for treason. Treason? Me not savvy. Neither do I. But from the little that was said, I have an idea that someone has been to the camp posing as me. Someone who planned to lead the troop into ambush. Um, that not good. Otto, I'm beginning to notice something. What that? Certain signs here on this slope. Look around a bit. Uh, me see him. Look like plenty Indian move along here. The signs, plenty fresh. Otto, I'm sure the Indians were hiding on the slopes of this narrow valley, waiting to ambush the troopers. Uh. They found out the troopers learned of the ambush. So the Indians left here sometime before dawn. If troopers think Indians still here, them not come through valley on way to fort. That's right. The Indians may figure the same way and plan to ambush the troops somewhere else. We'll scout around and find out which way they went when they left the valley. Easy, steady, be Easy, Come on, Silver. The valley trail curved gradually northward. Until a few miles beyond the place where the ambush had been planned, it joined the upper trail. The masked man and Toto finally reached the point where the trails joined and rode on for a short distance before halting. Who's in this I expected the Indians to plan an ambush somewhere along the upper trail before it joined the valley trail. Ah. They've left sign enough to show they followed the valley trail all the way. Their tracks too show right along here. That's right. We see where trail reach river just ahead. Look like Indians cross river. They can't go far beyond the other side without running into scouts from the fort. We'll turn off to the left to that small wooded bluff just ahead. We see a cross river from there. Yes, I'll use my binoculars. Perhaps I'll find out something. Come on, Silver. Come up, scout. Now, I'll use the binoculars. Uh, there, Cottonwood Grove, just beyond the other bank. Yes, but once across the river, the cavalry would give it a wide berth. I think there's an Indian chief on his pony. He just rode to the edge of the grove. There's a horseman riding in from the other direction. Here, take a look, Toto. Uh, uh, you 
see him plain. Chief wait for other fella. Him seem to... He must sabe. Other fella wear mask. Ride white horse like you. Well, let me see. He must be the one who impersonated me. That's right. Now they're pointing toward the river. Tato, I think I know their plan. And what's that? The river is wide at that point and stirred deep. The Indians wait until the troopers are fording that river. They can rush out and massacre them. That's right. There's no time to lose. Ride downstream, cross over, and ride to Fort Terrett. Here, give Colonel Harris a silver uh, bullet. Me take it. Tell him the situation. And suggest that he bring all the men he can spare. Move up as close as he can on the other side of the Indians' hiding place. Uh, me do it. What you do? I'm going back along the trail until I meet the troopers. Maybe them shoot when they... I thought of a plan. Ask the turtle to wait beyond where the Indians are hiding until he hears a bugle. All right, get going, Tonto. Hurry. Get him up, Scout. Hold Silver. Meantime, Captain Milton, with Lieutenant Wiley and the wounded scout, rode at the head of his cavalry troop along the upper trail. Hawkins, I hope I'm right in following your advice to use the upper trail. Don't worry, sir. This upper trail runs through open country all the way to the river. Once across that, we'll have no worries. Well, I'll have to take your word for it. Get up there. Hey, somebody riding down the trail. Coming fast. Maybe another scout from the port, sir. I, I... Look, Captain, it's a mass man. Well, I'll be... Throw! I'll pick him right out of the saddle. I'll have oh, to wait, him. Oh, wait, Lieutenant. We'll have our guns trained on him. I wonder what nerve the man has. Oh, no, oh, oh, easy, steady, big fella, easy. Take him prison, Lieutenant. Don't let him get away this oh, time. Oh, wait a minute, Captain. First, listen to what I have to say. Don't listen to him, Captain. I trusted you once, sir. Why should I do so again? The man who came to you yesterday was an imposter. We're wasting time, sir. I see. Oh, wait, hold to... on, Lieutenant. There is something different about this man. Deeper voice, for one thing. I have a letter of identification in my pocket, Captain. It's signed with the colonel. Let me see it. Why, of course. Hmm. Well, this does identify you as the... Lieutenant, didn't the masked man who came to us yesterday show you such a letter before you brought him to me? Why, no, sir. He did have the note you sent, so I thought You that... thought? I distinctly told you the man we expected would bring a letter from the colonel. This man's telling the truth. The other was an imposter. That's right, Captain. I should have known myself. I heard you carried silver bullets, and I see them in your gun belt. The man we saw yesterday carried ordinary bullets. Captain, are they really silver, sir? Here, see for yourself. Yes, it's true. Now I know we've made a mistake. Tell me, sir, what is it you wanted to say to us? The Indians are in a grove just beyond the riverbank on the other side. They plan to massacre your troop midstream. So that's it. Captain, if you'll trust me, I think we can route White Fox's braves and the crooks who work with them. All right, I will trust you now. What's your plan, sir? We'll uh, leave the trail just ahead and ride north a bit. It was mid-afternoon. Buck Carey, still wearing a mask and a white hat, sat under a tree near the edge of the grove talking to Rusty. The white horse was tethered nearby. Yeah, something funny about this, Rusty. I felt sure the troopers had reached the river before now. Uh, there's no sign of them yet, Buck. I don't forget. When they do come and things start getting hot, you're going to ride out there so as they can get a look at you. <laughs> the Lone Ranger will have to leave the territory after what happens today. Yeah, the Indians are keeping quiet, but they'll make noise enough soon. Yeah, but I don't... Hey, did you hear that? Hey, Buck! The troopers! They're coming down along the riverbank on this side. They must have been tipped off. But we have enough Indians to hold them off. Yeah, another bugle. They came from west of here toward the fort. Look! Coming over the hill back of us. The soldiers from Fort Harris. The Indians will be trapped. Come on, get your horses quick. Make for the river. As the troopers moved in from each side, they gradually spread out so that the Indians had no chance to escape. The battle waxed fierce and hot, and the great figure of the Lone Ranger could be seen in the thickest part of the fray. As the masked man helped fight back the furious onslaught of the frenzied Indians, he caught sight of Buck Carey making a break for the river. The Lone Ranger moved out of the fight and rode after the fleeing figure. The mighty silver responded to the urgent cry of his master and steadily closed the gap between the Lone Ranger and Buck. Many of the fighting troopers and Indians gaped in open wonder as they saw what seemed to be two identical masked men on white horses racing toward the river. Master Big Fellow, faster! Buck glanced back and seeing the masked man behind him frantically clawed for his gun, which slipped from his shaking fingers and fell to the ground. He wondered why the Lone Ranger didn't shoot. 
A moment later, he found out when the great silver pulled alongside. Get off that horse! With a mighty leap, the Lone Ranger dragged Buck from the saddle. <laughs> On your feet! I'll kill you! Oh, will you? The Lone Ranger and Buck exchanged heavy blows, and for the moment seemed well matched. But soon Buck's expression changed to one of wonder, then fear, as the Lone Ranger rained hammer like blows that rocked the outlaw on his heels. This is for what you try to do to the troopers! <laughs> Oh, you dirty. Oh, that's so. Dang it. The big outlaw took first one blow, then another to the jaw. Forceful blows that were more than any man could stand. And with a groan, he fell to the earth. All right, you're through. Oh, 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 oh. Good work, sir. We've won the battle thanks to you. Captain, there's your imposter. I'll take off his mask. Buck Carey, I might have known. You know him? A hunted outlaw, Captain. Wanted for selling firearms to the Indians, as well as helping them plan attacks on settlers. We caught the other two as they started to follow this man. Good. Colonel Harris should recommend that you receive a medal for what you've done, sir. I have no use for medals, Captain. Thanks just the same. Oh, 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 boy. See, I... I want to apologize to you. It's not necessary, Lieutenant. (laughs) I'm sorry I was forced to take such drastic action to escape from you this morning. By thunder, you move like lightning. I never saw anything like it. (laughs) I bet Kerry thinks he was struck by lightning from the look on his face when I rode up. Well, we'll have a lot to talk about, Lieutenant, when we see the Colonel. Yes, sir. Believe me, without this mask, friend, I... Otto and I are glad we were able to help. I hope we meet again sometime. All right, Tato, we'll leave now. You just right, go. Adios. Goodbye, Mr. Goodbye. Goodbye. Lieutenant, there goes a loyal American who will be remembered long after the rest of us are gone and forgotten. They'll never forget the Lone Ranger. Feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated, created by George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Enterprises, directed by Charles D. Livingston, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. (laughs) 